Check this out. Perhaps you'd like to use highlighting to create easy to follow, eye-catching instructions. Okay, okay, maybe I shouldn't have used the word easy. Another benefit to highlighting is the ability to drive attention towards something that would easily go unnoticed. Let me show you that one again. Just kidding. Take a look at this clip. Look how you can use highlighting in combination with other editing tools to create a really exciting effect. Well, whatever your case may be, this video will have you off to the races. Okay, let's get to it. So here you are in Mobavi and you've added your video clip or photo down in the timeline. Now with your clip selected, you will need to navigate to the highlight and conceal tool. The first way is by selecting the more tools icon. This icon is located at the very bottom of the tool column with the four small squares. After you have selected more tools, proceed by clicking on the video editing drop-down tab, and then select the highlight and conceal option, which is found on both the drop-down list and over to the right in the tool gallery. There is another way to easily access the highlight and conceal tool. Simply click on your video clip or photo, select the tools option, and then highlight and conceal. Okay, so now you're ready to highlight. There are three steps to go over, and they are masks, mask properties, and motion. The first step is choosing your mask. For highlighting an object, you will want to choose from the bottom four options in the mask gallery. These options allow you to choose between a blurred or darkened background, and either round or square shape for your highlight. And yes, you can very easily change any of these settings later on, so don't worry, just pick one and try it out. Once you've picked an option, you will see the change reflected in your preview window. You can now move the mask around by clicking and dragging, and you can resize by either using the adjustments provided on the mask or by simply rolling the wheel on your computer mouse. Okay, let's move on to the second step, mask properties. With the mask properties tool, you can easily adjust opacity, feathering, and you can even outline. You can adjust these settings by either grabbing the slider bar or by manually keying in your desired level. Real quick, lowering the opacity will make the background become more transparent, feathering will soften the edges around your mask, and outlining is pretty handy if you'd like to draw attention to whatever it is you are highlighting. Now, if this is all you need to do with your photo or video, then after adjusting the mask properties, you're done. Be sure to click apply. But if you would like to add tracking to your video clip, then now it's time to move on to the third step, motion. In this step, you can choose which tracking mode to use, quick or precise. I'm going to try and explain this real simply. When deciding between the two options, precise tracking takes more time to process, especially the longer and more complex your clip is. With the quick option, you may notice the tracking quality diminish, but this can still be a really great option to save you time. Once you have selected your tracking mode, click track and allow a few moments for the tracking feature to process. And that's it. Now you can watch back your clip and see how it looks. Now, if you don't like the way that it turned out, click on your highlighted object over here in your preview window, then come up to this little trash can and click that. Now that will delete everything you just did and you can start over from the beginning. But before you take off, let me quickly go over a couple of common situations you may run into. Like what if you need to add another highlight? This is easy. Just go back into your highlight and conceal tool, click on the big plus icon up top, and then run through the same steps as before. Another common situation you may come across is when the object that you're tracking moves off the screen. When this happens, you'll notice that the tracking feature gets confused and starts jumping around the screen. To avoid this, I recommend that you split your video clip at any point that your subject enters or exits the screen. Once you have all of your splits in place, then proceed to add highlights and tracking to any clip that you prefer. Last thing I want to mention is that if you ever want to undo an action, you can either click on the little back arrow located to the top left of your timeline or simply press Ctrl Z.